Hello, my name is Kyle Bentley. I'm an application engineer with ProLim PLM. In this Snack Bite video, we're going to be looking at the additive validation tools to make sure that your part meets the requirements for your 3D printer. So let's go ahead and look at those tools inside of NX12 here. So inside of NX12, you're going to see a new group on the Analysis tab. You'll see the design validation for additive manufacturing. If you don't have this group on, you can come over to the black arrow on the Analysis tab and turn those tools on. So the tools we're going to look at are the wall thickness, overhang angle, minimum radii, printable volume, and wholly enclosed volume. So let's go ahead here and take a look at wall thickness. So notice it goes ahead and selects the body. The next thing you'll have to do is specify the build plane CSIS. And this goes off of the positive Z or XY plane normal. So what that does is it looks for any faces based on the XY plane normal or the positive Z that are less than the minimum thickness there. So we can go ahead and type in a minimum thickness and then calculate that. So then it'll show the areas that are less than one millimeter for this example. So maybe I need to go ahead and thicken those areas for my 3D printer. Again, you can specify the minimum thickness um, for your requirements here. The next one we're going to look at is the minimum radii. So not notice with the minimum radius, this is a dynamic command. Notice I have 0.25 millimeters set in here and none of the faces are selected. Also notice in this case, I do not have show only less than minimum radius on. So it shows the um, faces that are more than 0.25 uh, millimeters as well on the, uh, on the radius there as well. So in here I can specify, for example, one millimeter and then it'll show the radii that is less than one millimeter. If I only want to see those faces, you check on show only less than minimum radius and then it'll show you those areas. So maybe we need to increase that radius value there. All right, the next tools that we're going to look at here are the overhang angle, printable volume, and wholly enclosed volume. So with the overhang angle command, this lets you know if you need to build any kind of support structures for your part. So in here we select the body, it goes ahead and selects that for us, and then we will specify the build plane thesis again. Again, these faces go off of the positive Z or XY plane normal. So what this command does is it looks for any faces that exceed the overhang angle. In this case, I have it specified as 45 degrees. It'll also give you the overhang area as well, so you know how much area is needed um, for support structures. So notice that this goes off of the positive Z. I can click and drag it and notice it is dynamic. Okay, again, you'll have to specify the build plane thesis. So this helps you to see if you have any areas that need support structures. The next one is printable volume. So this checks to make sure that your part can fit inside of your printer. So we can specify both here. So notice I have both shown. We can also see the, uh, the printer volume. So there's my printer volume. You can also see the part volume as well. And then again, you can see both to make sure that it will fit. The last check is wholly enclosed volume. Now what this command does is it looks for a void or a cutout in your part to make sure that powder can be emptied from it. Now this technique is more used for a powder bed fusion um, 3D printer. You would not use this example for more of a material extrusion. So notice that it fails the check here. So I need to go ahead and put a void or a cutout in my part. So I'll go ahead and unsuppress a cutout I have. Notice it was suppressed and now it puts a cutout all the way through. Notice that this part is also shelled out as well. We can take a quick section of that to see that here. Okay, with that cutout in there, I can go ahead and rerun the wholly enclosed volume. 
and then you'll notice that it will pass. So with the powder bed fusion on 3D printers, I can then empty the powder from the part once it has been 3D printed. So that is how we can use the validation tools to make sure our part meets the requirements for our 3D printer. ProLim PLM.